Hello, my name is Jason Folk. I'm one of the physicians of the Stedman Hawkins Clinic of the Carolina. I'm one of the orthopedic surgeons in the group uh, who specializes in sports medicine, uh, treating uh, arthroscopic knee, shoulder, and hip pathology. Today we're going to talk to you about uh, femoral acid tabular impingement. Um, femoral acid tabular impingement is a condition that occurs in the hip, uh, which can be treated, uh, historically has been treated by open surgical dislocation of the hip. Uh, but more recently, we've developed the techniques and technology in order uh, that enable us to treat this uh, arthroscopically. Plan to uh, discuss uh, the uh, the definition of it and uh, outline the pathology that uh, that occurs in the various different types of uh, femoral acetabular impingement. As the name would imply, femoral acetabular impingement is a conflict between the femur, which is the ball, the hip is a ball and socket joint, and so there's a conflict between the ball of the hip and the acetabulum, which is the socket of the hip. That conflict occurs because of two reasons. There is either, uh, either there's morphological issues that occur where the socket will be oriented backwards so that the hip will pinch in front, Similar, in, in, and also you can get pinching uh, by another mechanism where there is uh, essentially the femoral head has lost its sphericity. It's no longer uh, perfectly round. It is sort of uh, what we call out of round. Uh, this creates a, uh, a situation in which there is a levering action into the hip. Um, specific to either type, pincer impingement occurs again with the sockets oriented backwards. Um, in a, in a, say for example, in a perfect world, our sockets were oriented this way. What happens in, in pincer impingement is the sockets are oriented kind of towards the back. And so there's no longer coverage in the front. There's, there's increased coverage in the front. And that uh, creates a conflict where the femur will, will pinch. The primary pathology we see with that is labral tearing. And uh, labral tearing, the labrum is, is the soft tissue uh, or cartilage, it's a fibrocartilage that goes around the socket. Uh, the labrum uh, is, a, is firmly attached and associated with the uh, acetabulum. It also transitions seamlessly with the cartilage that caps the bone within the joint, the articular cartilage. And labral tearing is probably best thought of as being not so much a tear in a tissue as it is as a loosening of that tissue's attachment to the bone. And what occurs is that the tissue loosens from its attachment to the bone, and that's what incites the, the uh, symptoms, which are oftentimes mechanical type symptoms um, and inflammatory type symptoms in which they're just generalized pain in the hip. Um, and the pathology is primarily uh, the loosening of the, the labrum, but then also in the area where there is the o increased overhang of the acetabulum, there oftentimes is a softening of the cartilage that caps the bone in conjunction with that. Um, in the uh, CAM mechanism, femoral acetabular impingement uh, creates, as we talked about, the, the femoral head is not perfectly spherical, and there's essentially a knuckle on the ball, and that knuckle will lever into the hip joint and that levering will typically cause selective injury to the cartilage that caps the bone on the socket. There's a variable degree of uh, injury or involvement of the uh, labral tissue uh, depending on the size of the, the, uh, the knuckle on the ball or the lesion itself, uh, but oftentimes we'll see articular cartilage injury and damage where there is a delamination of the cartilage that caps the bone. Um, the, the distribution, the demographics for this are uh, the CAM mechanism impingement is by far more common in, in males, and uh, the pincer mechanism impingement is by far more common in females. Treatment options for this, again, get back to arthroscopic intervention. The strategies for dealing with this arthroscopically are trying to restore the normal morphology or, or anatomy to the joint. And specific to pincer lesions, or the, where the, the sockets are, there's increased overhang uh, in the front of the sockets, the strategies for dealing with this are um, essentially taking the labrum down in, in total, removing it completely from the acetabular margin to expose the overhang, the increased overhang. And with various tools and drills and, and burrs, I will recontour the socket to remove that increased overhang. 
once the socket's been recontoured, which is confirmed at the time of surgery with uh, image intensification, which is uh, uh, intraoperative x-rays, and also by dynamic evaluation, by moving the hip in certain extremes of motion to be sure that the, the conflict between the femoral head and the acetabular rim is no longer there and, and that you've corrected that. Once you've done that, then reattachment of the labrum to the bone occurs. And uh, essentially it's done by placing anchors into the bone with sutures uh, grasping and uh, the tissue and reapproximating it to the um, acetabular margin. By doing so, this, this reproduces the purpose and, and the, the, um, the, you know, the function of the labrum. The function of the labrum, which is to deepen the socket, uh, and also the labrum serves to seal the joint, and that's probably its most important function. It seals the joint, it seals the thin fluid layer in the joint, which really helps reduce uh, joint reaction force in, in the, in the uh, hip. Um, specific to cam impingement, the, the knuckle on the, the, the ball, um, or knuckle on the head, there is uh, strategies for this are similarly um, removing that and restoring the normal sphericity of the femoral head. And in, in this instance, we uh, basically take our attention from the central compartment of the hip joint uh, where, where the labral uh, pathology or where the labral tissue is and the, and the cartilage that caps the bone to peripherally where the head and the neck join. And it's at that head neck junction where these lesions typically occur. Uh, strategies for dealing with it are fairly straightforward in that we use uh, motorized burrs in order to recontour and reshape the femoral head and try to restore the normal sphericity of the femoral head and the normal offset that is uh, uh, needed between the femoral neck and the femoral head as well. In general, uh, with this diagnosis of femoral acetabular impingement, um, the outcomes of this uh, procedure in this operation are tend to be very predictable. If, uh, if your patient uh, selection is appropriate with the uh, appropriate clinical signs and morphologic features, um, we, we feel as though we are essentially restoring the normal anatomy to the uh, hip and, and, and as a result um, we find that, that these operations tend to be very predictable in uh, relieving symptoms. Uh, of pain and loss of motion in the hip that are common with uh, femoral acetabular impingement. Um, it is also, it, it's of increasing frequency here that we see femoral acetabular impingement and it is coming from a generalized uh, uh, increased understanding of what it is and I think healthcare providers are becoming uh, more in tune with this, this diagnosis as it, is a, as it is a relatively new diagnosis. And um, I think as, as healthcare providers become uh, more educated on it and uh, understand some of the, uh, the anatomy, the, and it, very simple radiographic anatomy that are the hallmarks of this problem, uh, it is, it's, it's, it, the numbers of people with this is increasing. Historically, these were patients who were um, deemed to have uh, essentially groin pulse. They, they often, and, and beyond that, were not offered much beyond physical therapy and, and resignation to uh, activity modifications. Um, we also uh, recognize that this uh, pathology can uh, lead to uh, early and fairly significant arthritic changes in certain conditions, uh, more specific to the CAM lesion. Uh, and that also uh, speaks to uh, the importance of recognition of this pathology and addressing it in a timely uh, fashion if the uh, clinical picture and symptoms warrant.